Hi everyone and welcome to another video. In this video we are going to be discussing motion graphics itself. Now other things we've been doing in the previous classes and uh, videos is uh, learning After Effects and all the components of using different elements like music and video and putting them together in After Effects and using shape layers and masking and some really robust uh, 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 tools in After Effects and all the things we're going to do. But motion graphics is the bread and butter of a uh, designer or a graphic artist, um, an animator. It's a project and, and uh, a type of job that you can do very easily and quickly. It can be very simple. It can be very complex. It's something that you're doing all the time for various clients. Um, but it's something that uh, once you've mastered it, um, you can do a tremendous amount of interesting work and just really cool eye popping stuff that makes everybody, you know, really into what you're doing, whether it's your client or your audience. So um, as you can see here on the screen, I have this little um, basic um, imagery that I put together uh, so that we can learn how to do some really quick motion graphics. It's nothing too complicated. This is probably on the super, super easy side of motion graphics. But this, uh, what we're doing here, this concept will work when you do even more complex stuff. And, you, and I provided some other videos that shows you some other tricks and things you can do in order to make some, again, like that eye popping, really attractive type of motion graphics that makes people go crazy and where you get the big bucks. So that's what we're looking for uh, when we do these type of projects. Uh, this file is called School PSD, uh, and so it is in the file section of this week's lecture. So make sure you download it. Now you can, for your assignment, you can go ahead and redo what I'm doing in this video, or you can do something else completely. Um, this is basically very similar to what you're going to be doing for your final as well. So this is a good practice in, uh, before you actually start on your final. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do here in, in Photoshop and you can use any other software that uh, digital imagery manipulation that does anything like that, like Illustrator or Krita or any any kind of software that is similar to Photoshop. Uh, I brought in some clip art that I just pulled in that has like all these uh, school elements. Um, you, you can see there's a school building and a calculator, things like that. It says World Education. Uh, none of this really matters. It's just uh, an example. Over here in our layers, I want to show you what we have is this background layer, just a little splash of color. And then we have books, as you can see, I'm just clicking off the layers. They're all individual. Um, hold the ruler, I'm not using, <laughs> let me just do it that way. Um, and then there's the color pencils, calculator, and so on. Here's the earth, and then the text, uh, which is misspelled. Let me fix that real quick. Okay, so then. What's very important in After Effects is that when you animate anything, everything needs to be on its own layer. Okay, so every one of these little things that you see here, from the pencil to the calculator to the text, is all on a separate layer. Okay, that's very important. Now this is already saved, and I'm just going to go ahead and minimize uh, my After Effects and open, I'm sorry, in uh, Photoshop and open up After Effects. Now I'm going to go to, um, you can either double click, in, double click here in your bin, which will open up your import file section and I'm going to go and look for um, that Photoshop file was right here. As you can see here, all the clip art um, that I used, uh, I just took it off the internet and brought it into Photoshop. But this is the Photoshop file I'm looking for. Okay. Now this is what you previously just saw where they were all composed together here. I'll bring it back up so you can see that's this. Okay. So here's the Photoshop file. It's very important that we change something here. Okay. Well, we don't want it to come in as a footage. We want it to come in as a composition and retain layer sizes. Okay, we're gonna change that. And then this is very important because if it comes as a footage, it will come as a simple one image. We don't want that. We want it to be a composition and with the layer sizes. Now, if we have composition by itself, what that will do is that it's gonna bring in everything. And actually, I'm gonna show you. Let me just do the composition with the retain layer sizes first and import that. It's going to ask you again if you want it as a footage, composition, or retain layer sizes. We're going to leave it like that. And then 
it will ask you here if you want to have edible not the type you eat but <laughs> the type you edit uh, layer styles or if you want to merge them all into a single footage which we, we don't want we want the top one and hit okay now what happens is that immediately we have a composition that's been made for us normally we create a composition you know by clicking on the new composition button coming up here new composition control n uh, but this one did one already because that's what we imported it as it also imported this folder which if we open it up has all those layers separate so this came in almost like if i brought in individual images and i organized it here in after effects in a folder now if i double click on this it'll bring up the composition and it looks exactly the same as it does in photoshop and uh down here are our layers and you can see my misspelling there is let me just fix that it says yeet or yeeks there you go <laughs> we'll fix that and then uh you can see everything else is there we have the background and we can turn up all these uh, eyes you know so you can see there's the background and there's the books and so on and so on and bring it back in okay now um as like i said um everything has to be in layers so that you can animate everything okay um if it was not in layers then they would all be as one image okay but as you can see here if i grab the earth layer for example i can move it around just like that and it works like anything else i can change the scale like have anything we've done before and you know have uh, have our way with it to do whatever we want with it now after effects sometimes it's best to work backwards now um this is composition set to 30 seconds i'm probably not going to use all that I'll probably just do it to maybe four or five seconds. And I'm gonna just leave my time indicator right there. Try to get it to five. We can either type it in or we can move it, play around with it to get it as close. If it's one frame over, not a big deal. Now, what I want is pretty much everything to be in place as it is, okay? So if I uh, grab everything, except for the background, I don't need the background. And actually, if we come over here, you see this lock, you click on that, that will lock that background. So now I can't do anything to it. I can't even select it. Okay. So I know I'm not going to change the background at all. So leave it alone. Everything else is going to click. You can hold on shift and click everything like this. Again, either click from the top from the bottom doesn't matter. Hold on shift and click the bottom layer or everything you want to select at once. And let's go to P on our timeline. Okay. So uh, I'm going to move this up a little higher. Okay. So that we can see all our layers and right there the p is position and if we hit the stopwatch then we have all those little key ticks all those diamonds that appear right there so that's where everything will end okay now what i want to do is work on some other things okay so let's click out so we deselect everything and i the world education which is the text i'm going to hide that one for now okay we'll work on that one later Okay, but everything else I want to kind of appear um, all together uh, at different times, but all together in the same view. Okay, so one thing I'm gonna do is that the earth is kind of like in the wrong position. Well, no, it's in the right position because the, um, the, it's at the very top. Okay, so that's where I wanna keep it. Um, everything else I'm gonna do, oops, sorry, excuse me, press the wrong button. Um, I'm gonna grab the pencil calculator, color pencils, the ruler. I think I'm not, I'm not using in there, so I'll end up deleting it. Uh, the school, the beaker, and the books. Actually, let's go ahead and delete that ruler layer. We don't need it. And grab everything else again. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move, and I'm gonna do this all at one time. I just wanted to select them all so you can see where they're at. So what I'm gonna do is I can move them all into the center of the earth. Okay, so the pencil. We're gonna go ahead and I just also went to a different time. It doesn't matter right now because we'll change the timing. So I'm just gonna move the pencil inside and then you can grab the books. You don't even have to move, sorry. Uh, calculator, put it inside, color pencils, put it inside, school, beaker, and books just like the others right there. Okay, so what happens is that now when I scrub my timeline, everything should kind of like fan out and pop out from behind, like that. Now that's all nice, okay? We'll check the timing in a minute, 
But what I kind of want is for everything to maybe begin and end differently. So by moving the key text, and I'm going to randomize it a little bit. Uh, I'm just going to have maybe some start earlier, some start later, some end sooner, just like this. And what's going to happen is that they're just going to come at different times. Okay, some of them are coming in kind of at the same time. You can always change it. Maybe bring this in quicker and whatever you want. Keep it kind of random like that. One thing is, is that when we change, as we move these closer to one another, the speed changes, the timing. When we hit play here, and you see they come in kind of slow, like that. Okay. And then that means all I have to do is just maybe have some come in quicker. The closer these key ticks are, the faster the animation will be. And like that. Just let's hit play and you see they all pop out. And the timing there wasn't too bad. Okay. They kind of uh, uh, they kind of stopped abruptly and I'm not a fan of that. So what I'll do is just right click on each of the key ticks. You can actually do them. Oops, excuse me. Uh, you can select them multiple times or um, Select multiple ones at the same time. Just hold on, uh, hold on, shift. You can grab all these. Right click, excuse me. Uh, right click. Okay, key from assistant. We're going to easy ease in like that, and then they'll slow down as they reach the part that looks nicer. Just like that. Okay. that's pretty easy now we need to do something with the earth okay so the earth probably has to this is the end point of the earth this key tick and so we need it to end sooner in its position okay but um, what I want is for all the things behind it to go with the earth okay so we have this uh, let's select everything real quick press P to hide everything for a moment Okay, and just so it's easier for you to uh, see what I'm doing next. Now here's the earth, okay, and let's go ahead and change the color of it so that we know which is which. I'll use green. Okay, that's the earth right there. Okay, so it's it's better to do that so you can find things quicker. You know, oh, the earth is green, I'll go straight to that. All right, so everything else here, except for the background, and let's go ahead and change the color on that. And actually, you have to turn off your lock, and let's hit red to say don't touch that. Okay, so now um, here's the earth. There's these little swirl things. They're called parents or parenting. Uh, and basically what they do is that when we connect uh, this layer to the earth, um, they will behave however the earth behaves. Okay, so what that means is that I want all of these to go with the earth at the same time, but I don't want to animate all of these other layers. I just want to animate the earth. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I click on the swirl, click and drag it to the earth. Okay, now you can also do it here. All you have to do is just go down the drop down arrow and select the one. Now notice that this is grayed out for because that is the layer we're on, so we can't do anything to it. So we're going to go ahead and hit Earth that way. Okay, so you can you have two options click and drag to the Earth like this, or just go to this drop down and hit Earth on every one of those except for the background. All right, so now what happens is that if we press P on this now. There was our end point for our earth. And if I go to somewhere a little bit earlier and click and drag that earth straight down, notice that the other elements, the layers of the pencil and the calculator and the beaker, they're, they're not here because they're actually behind the earth as I move the earth away. So then when I bring in the, or when I scroll up here on the timeline, you see the earth will animate in like this, and then the other things will pop in just like that. Again, let's make the timing a little better by having that easy ease in. Okay, let's look at the animation, see how that works. See how it slowly comes to a stop, which is nice. Like that. And let me scrub this down a little bit so you can see it better. Just like that. And then everything else comes in from behind, like that. One more.
more time. Now, if you don't like the timing, you can always change it. You can speed it up by moving the key text closer, and it'll just appear faster. And again, move it closer, and it'll be faster. So that's maybe a little too fast. Let's slow it down some. There you go. So it's something very simple. Now we can do other things too. Uh, instead of just coming down, uh, we can also change the scale. So let's first go to the end. Now, if you hold on shift, it'll snap to your key text. See that? It's snapping. So I'm not holding down shift now, and it's, it's free. It's scrubbing easily. Hold down shift, it'll snap to the key text. So I'm going to go to here. And then what I'm going to do is press S now. Now, this is the scale of the earth that I want, so I'll press the stopwatch there. Let's go a little earlier over here. And let's scale it bigger. Okay, much bigger. Okay, now doing that reveals the earth. So if I press P to see where it's at, and let's go ahead and snap to that key tick, uh, because we liked it. Uh, we like the timing. Let's go ahead now and move the earth uh, down. Excuse me. Down. Uh, right about there. Let's take right there. Okay, and then I zoomed out so I can see things a little bit better. Hit play, and then now it looks like it's being tossed into the field, okay, into the background like that. Notice the abruptness in the stop. That's on the scale, so if we're at scale, right click on that keyframe assistant, easy is in, okay, and then it will come to a better stop. Notice how it's getting smaller you can also go back to that scale if you want to make it even more prominent, more noticeable. Go back to that point and let's look at it from there. Okay, a little more interesting. We can always enhance it by turning on the motion blur for the entire composition and turning on the motion blur for that layer, which is the earth. Okay and everything pops in from behind, just like that. And then what we can do is right in the middle of these things coming out from behind, what we can do is have now the text reveal. Now the text I wanna do a little differently. I don't want it to come in like from outside the frames or zooming in. What I want is to reveal it. And we can do it in different ways. I'm gonna do the most simplest way, which is using a mask. And we're just gonna have it um, up here. And we're gonna do it uh, right about, I think right there is a good spot. So we're gonna come up to here to the rectangle tool. Let's select it. Make sure you have the rectangle tool. And we're gonna make a Oh, excuse me, be on the layer, by the way. Okay, so what happened was that I was on the earth layer. So I wanna be on the correct layer. And I'm just gonna go ahead and draw a rectangle over the education. Now, what I wanna do is uh, go to the pen tool. I wanna make sure I have uh, this option here, the convert uh, vertex tool, okay, which looks like a sideways or upside down V, okay? And what I wanna do is we're gonna, excuse me, I'll hold on, uh, hold on the control button so you can position it better. Okay. Now what this does is that this deforms it a little bit like that. Okay. See, it actually deforms the corners. Um, sometimes this is, the corners are good for you know exactness. Uh, since this object is rounded or it's curved, I want to take away the corners. Okay. And then I'm going to add uh, a point here. Now it's kind of hard to see. But I added in a point. So notice that when my cursor goes on the line, it turns into the pen tool with a plus sign. And then right there is it. So I'm holding down control now so you can see that I can move it. Okay. Now this is the only part that I really care about. Okay. So I really want these two corners and then this middle part. Now notice when I drag it down, it makes that uh, disappear. Just like that. See that? Okay. So what I'm going to do is just going to move that point down you can see it better over the dark green now and I'm gonna move this point down and I'm gonna move this point down here okay 
Now, on our layer vertex layer, we have a new mask component here. If we open that up, we have the path, okay? I just wanna make sure I'm in the right spot where everything's coming. So we're gonna click on path, okay? And it gives us a stopwatch right there, or the key tech rather. And we, uh, we're we gonna move to right where it finishes. And then we may end up changing all this too, uh, but right where, where the elements finish coming in, right there. And I'm gonna grab, hold down control, uh, excuse me, I don't want to grab the whole thing, I just want to grab Ooh. Wait, give me a second, let's move to the selection tool It's a little tricky sometimes There it is Sometimes you have to like, wake it up And then now I can move it I'm gonna move it right there, and I want it to curve, okay? I don't want it to be a straight line because the text is not in a straight line. So something like that, right there. And then what we're gonna do is come back and you're gonna see that it reveals like that. See, just very easy, like that, it just appears, okay? Now, if we don't like the timing of it, we'll change it, but let's view it first. Okay, just click out, use your selection tool, click out over here and hit play. And you see it comes in. So let's look at the whole thing. And there's a little pause there for getting. Here comes the earth. Everything else. And it appears in. Now, again, timing is very important. Also, what's very important is how you want this to be represented. So you can see how this is a straight cut, right? We have a option here called the mask feather. And if you were to open that up, notice that it kind of reveals a haziness or a feathering around the edge there. So when I go back here, okay, and I'm gonna click out one more time. Oops, right here. Okay, you're gonna see that now it reveals not so sharp, but with a little feather. Okay, be careful with how much you, uh, how much of that feather you put because if you go a little too high, you'll see. Let me go back uh, a little over here. If you go too high, you may reveal some of it. It look ghostly, so don't do that. Um, you want it to be just enough. I think mine was at nine, and that looks good, okay? Again, timing is important, so I'm just gonna make it up here maybe a little bit sooner. And always, I recommend, always end with an easy ease in, just it looks better, unless you need something to be very sharp and at the stop, uh, then you don't do that. But there you go, so just like that. So we have the opening things pop off from behind world education with a little music some sound effects uh, this becomes a little more presentable now um, notice that I have some emptiness here too much of a pause at the beginning so then I can always scooch this down here so when I render my work area it's going to start here instead of all the way over here so it doesn't matter if you begin at frame uh, zero it matters you know where you actually cut. And then over here, look, I have all this. I don't need all this. So if my presentation was to open this, it needs to stay there for a little bit and then fade away, we can do that. So so for example, sorry, uh, right here, let's move that to the end, or maybe a little bit more, okay? And then we'll close everything here. So I'm gonna render out of here. Now, one last thing though, and this is actually very important. Um, I want to render, or I'm sorry, fade this all out together, okay? Now I have um, this composition here, which is the school, okay? So if I go ahead and make a new composition, and I'm gonna call this school logo intro. And it does, again, really it doesn't matter the time duration, we'll go ahead and change that um, in the edit. So I'll hit okay. I can bring in this composition inside my school logo intro comp like this, and it comes in as one single layer. So now I can make an edit as far as how it begins. Does it fade in? Uh, do I need to cut it? Do I need to do something else as a whole rather as individual, if I go to this tab, as individual pieces. So right here I can go ahead and say, let's go ahead and 
uh, faded in. So right about here, press T for the opacity. We'll turn that on, go a little bit before it, put it to zero, and then we can have a black frame comes in. There's the animation. It'll hold, hold, right about here, I think. We'll add a new keyframe, come uh, a little bit there, and then cut it off. And then we'll just cut it at uh, at 10, around 10 frames. I'm sorry, 10 seconds, more or less right there. Press N as a Nancy to uh, have that part skip ahead over here. So this is where my workspace ends. And I could probably leave this a little bit open, maybe not that much. So if I move my indicator right over here, press B as in boy, and then they'll shorten the workspace right there. This is the work area. This is where it renders. Okay, nothing else. All this doesn't matter anymore. This just this light gray area here. Okay, so then fades in, animation, and then fades out. And that right there may not seem like a lot, but for many of your clients, it's exactly what they're looking for. It's gonna make their presentation uh, pop. Uh, obviously, we can make this a little more interesting. We can do a lot of different things with it. But for the basic principles of motion graphics, this is what it is. Okay, so then now it's just time to render. We go to uh, composition and make sure you have your timeline highlighted, okay? So, and it doesn't really matter where your time indicator is, as long as this area is highlighted. Go to composition, add to Adobe Media Encoder. We don't wanna render from After Effects. Let's go to the encoder. If you have it, um, which you should, it's, it's normally comes in with your Creative Cloud. Um, and it's really the one of the best uh, best softwares to have. You know, you can convert almost anything. Um, and we'll just wait for it to pop in. So we get populated in a second. There it is. And uh, normally these are my settings um, for a lot of my different projects. What I'm going to do here is just click on this so I can send it to uh, a new place. I want to make sure it's going to the proper. I'm going to put it in my class project here and we'll call it school logo intro that's fine hit save and then press the little green arrow and we'll render and so um, we'll wait for this to render and uh, it goes it will be very quick you can see how that blue line is going straight across and it's done okay when you have a check mark it's great okay we can now close this and I'll upload uh, this video as well for you guys to watch but uh, you can go ahead and create something similar you can create the same exact thing um, have fun with it and like I said this is like a preview of what your final should look like all right so that's it for today thank you and have a good one